property development business been badly affected over the last two years or has it managed to keep going? I think what I've seen is I've seen different things happening in different parts of the UK. Um, so going back two years in um, Gloucestershire, the market for development sites was very strong at that point. Um, it, was, it seemed to be starting to tail off in London and certainly in the last 12 months the market for development sites in London has been relatively flat. Mm. Uh, sites that would have previously come onto the market and been bid up to maybe 20 or 25% over the asking price and sold very quickly have come onto the market and sat around. So it's been more of a buyer's market without a doubt. Um, I think that um, developers and funders and, and, and I guess investors who are investing uh, larger amounts of money, so family offices and private equity funds, have stepped back and taken a good look at the market and said, um, is, is now really a good time to be putting our money in the market? But the, as we approach the, the deadline for a, um, or the assumed deadline for a, a, a decision on what, on what happens with Brexit, that, um, un, that um, uncertainty does, does seem to be starting to unwind itself. And my perception is that confidence is, gener is, is slowly starting to return. Well, it's interesting. I mean, there's been a lot of criticism of developers for, um, for excuse the expression, of land banking, really, and just, just holding on to sites that have got permission, not developing them. And, and, and yet now we're finding that there is a, a, there's definitely a lull in the market in selling these sites. So it's almost a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? I think, can I intervene now? I think a, a lot of the criticism there has come from central London sites. And it's not necessarily developers. It's, it's high net worth investors that are, uh, are banking on capital growth. So London's seen quite a few problems there where there's been huge um, properties built, you know, uh, bought and just left empty. You know, there's stuff on, on Mayfair huge buildings, um, ex-embassies and things like that that have been bought up and just sit there boarded up. It's another the, problem. The, but. the difference <laughs> with that, though, is that if we run a visa regime that says anybody around the world, wherever they get their money from, can buy a permanent visa here for four or five thousand, well, four or five million pounds investment in a property. What on earth are they going to do? They're going to buy property because you're going to get capital growth, even if you do so, just leave it sitting there. So I don't know. Maybe maybe the unexplained wealth regulations that have recently come in might change that. Might a little bit. that well, yeah. I think there are a lot of people who have had money in central and prime central London. So Knightsbridge and Mayfair, even places like 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 Holland Park, that those those zone one locations that are very expensive, they've they've seen a significant fall off in the the price of their property, and um, to the extent that, that some some of those um, properties are now worth maybe thirty or forty percent less than they were a couple of years ago. I think the instinct of people who are in a situation like that will be simply to sit on those properties and do nothing with them until the market recovers. Yeah.